I'm Think So Joe. Welcome back to Things You Might Not Know, and today we're going to talk about weekends. Thank God the weekend is finally here. One can comfortably say that these are the most loved words ever. From little kids who go to school, to adults who are almost overjoyed knowing that they would escape the stress of commuting to work, driving in cars, taking buses in the train, even to senior citizens, these words inspire a lot of feelings, and there probably isn't a single person alive who doesn't feel the same. Weekends for many people serve many purposes. A time to unwind from the many day-to-day -day activities and take time to think deeply on issues bothering on one's life, or a time to hang out with friends and family, hitting the road, going for a hike, or even hitting the gym. The list simply goes on and on. The idea of the weekend even goes beyond the possibilities for leisure. Economists think that there is a genuine correlation between a reduction in working hours and market reductions in energy consumption. And of course, this simple idea can go a long way in making the economy more environmentally friendly. Thus, the weekend is truly a moment of bliss-filled potential. The question left to answer now is how the idea of weekends came to be accepted as a norm. It is common knowledge that it takes approximately 365 days for the Earth to rotate round the Sun, resulting into a year. And the time between full moons were allegedly marked by the month. However, the seven-day week is completely man's invention since it didn't arbitrarily exist in nature. The roots of the seven-day week could be traced back 4,000 years ago in Babylon. The number seven held much significance for them since they believed that there were seven planets in the solar system. Therefore, they planned their days around it. Thus, little by little, the idea spread to other parts of the world, and it would soon become widely accepted to classify a seven-day period as a week. For much of history, workers would mostly take a day off from work due to religious traditions, where Christians observed a day of rest on Sunday, Muslims on Fridays, and Jews on Saturdays. However, with the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, the concept of a two-day weekend for workers began to take shape. This was a period in history where factories that produced traditional goods were rapidly turning the traditional farming economy into a largely industrial one. Most workers couldn't cope with the idea of working seven days in a week, as this didn't always allow them to settle their farm schedules, as well as preventing them from spending time with their families. As the complaints grew louder, workers soon formed into labor unions and organized strikes in a bid to send a message to their employers. This demand was hard fought, and a lot of people were injured, and others killed. One such factory owner who pioneered the adoption of the 40-hour workweek was Henry Ford, the American industrialist who had revolutionized factory production with his assembly line method. Born to the family of William and Mary Ford on a family farm near Dearborn, Michigan, miles away from Detroit, he attended school when he was not helping his father in his farm, and soon left for Detroit at age 16 to find work in machine shops, and there he saw, for the first time, the internal combustion engine. He soon returned back to his hometown and built his first automobile, the gasoline-powered horseless carriage, the Quadricycle. He soon built his company and would soon become one of the most respected men in the business. He believed in the theory that too many work hours for workers was detrimental to productivity, and in 1940, he adopted the policy completely and began giving his workers a five-day, 40-hour work week and a two-day weekend. He felt that allowing them a couple of days off each week will enable them to purchase goods, his cars included, and offer them time to enjoy using them. He explained that every man needed more than just a day in a week for proper rest and recreation. He believed that in order for a man to live properly, he needed to spend more time with his family, thus putting to rest the notion that leisure for workmen amounted to time wasted. He therefore reconfigured the system such that, although workers' time on the job was decreased, they, in turn, were expected to put in much more effort while they were at it. Seeing how useful and advantageous the concept was, most factory owners around the world soon followed his lead and began to implement the two-day weekend as pioneered by Henry Ford. Finally, the 40-hour work week became the legal standard in the United States when President Roosevelt passed the Fair Labor Standard Act, or FLSA, in 1938. Thus, next time you step out to enjoy the weekend, just remember to give a little credit to Henry Ford for his immense contributions towards the very benefits you now enjoy. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Things You Might Not Know! 
If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and a comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can see a playlist of things you might not know videos over here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.